Tennis coming in behind this F, and they're uh, they just finished their hundred hundredth mission. Actually, they got cycled through to go back up to rest cap one of our other pilots that was shot down earlier. So they they've just got a hundred one missions, and uh, we're real proud of them because uh, first of all, not many lieutenants fly the 105, and secondly, to get a hundred missions in it is outstanding. We think. So uh, we're going to meet him here at the end of the runway and take him on up to the uh, parking space, give him a bottle of champagne, and I imagine they're three happy boys. When all is said and done, you really cannot adequately relate a war. War is too potent, too personal. War is living and laughing and crying and dying. It has always been the man who fights who can best report a war, if he will. True, his story may be confused, sometimes harsh, sometimes boisterously non-committal, but it is real. This is one segment, one small insight into our present war. This is the 105 story, the story of pilots flying over the Red River Valley in the heartland of North Vietnam. Beyond this river barrier, a great concentration of hostile weapons awaits the arrival of Air Force fighter bombers. Any mission north of the Red River requires a special courage known only to the men who must fly again and again into the area until they reach the magic number 100. 100 missions, a completed tour. These are the men of the 388th Tactical Fighter Wing during the month of November, 1966. Well, what are they doing? He says, well, how do I tell if they're friendly? He says, well, if they come up with their hands over their heads, they'll be friendly. He says, no, one of these guys has got a gun. The guy says, well, how far are you from them? He says, well, they're standing right here by me. And he says, well, they must be friendly. <laughs> how does it feel to have a hundred? Well, I thought I was going to kill myself on initial. You want to know the truth? Jeez. FOD. Okay. 
Major height. One mission, one counter, one for the month. Finally made the board. 99 hard ones to go. Oh, I'll get 43 this afternoon. I've got to put them off my hand for number 90. I've already got them. So you're going to get two today, huh? Yep. One more and I'll be able to make a big day. One more you'll be able to go red. He's been here about six months. It averages about six months for the tour. This wing, uh, even though we're roughly 100 miles from any sort of civilization, morale is high here. I've noticed that. The men know what they're doing and why they're here. Well, if they really still have to be over here, I'll come right back and do any interest to me. You come right back and do another hitch. You bet I will. Well, I feel we have a reason to be here. As you read, uh, common progression in Asia. I feel that we didn't just take some measures to stop it here. We may be fighting in our backyard. Today. Enjoy some of the things I've been over here for, such as the American way of life. I served in World War II in the Southwest Pacific. And served during Korea. Yes, uh, I personally tried to discourage it. The man has put in a hundred missions over North Vietnam to go home, get a rest, and then come back. However, I have uh, one pilot here that just insisted on uh, taking another hundred, and he's here. His name is uh, Lieutenant Richter. Yeah, I want to come back down. How come you got to stay here? Yeah. Uh, hey, you worked harder. You could have stayed here with me. Yeah, but Mommy wouldn't have had any part to do with that. Yeah, okay, there's, there's the deal, you know. You're... The flying's good. You don't have all the little nitpicking rules and regulations you have to put up with in the States. At least we didn't two months ago. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's still a lot better than it is back there now. But I just, you know, I enjoy it. And then, uh, and it, it's the kind of deal like everybody says, yeah, I'm waving a flag, but I'm not. But at the same time, you know, where are you going to, uh, where are you going to stop it at, you know? Where's, where's Kami? Is you going to wait till her in, uh, the Philippines, or in Australia, or San Francisco, or Des Moines, Iowa, you know. You just stop sure. it here, or wait till somewhere later on. I don't think most of the people will think about that. They like me, you know, what what happens, you know, if uh, if I get shot down. Uh, too mean, they'll never get me anyway. But. Our bombing objectives, I believe, can be very distinctly divided into two phases. Our interdiction program conducted in the southern portion of North Vietnam in an attempt to deny movement of the enemy into South Vietnam. And our strategic, if you will, objectives in the northern portion of North Vietnam in terms of attacking principal lines of communications, the Northeast and the Northwest railroads, which comprise the two most major railroads in North Vietnam, also, POL installations and other military supply and storage areas located in the Delta regions of North Vietnam. This flight line at night is a pretty active place. There's more work done at night, actually, than there is in the daytime, because uh, the daytime is, is uh, completely taken off with the launching and recovering airplanes. We don't have much time for anything else. Of course, there's a turnaround. There's a lot of uh, bomb loading uh, for the second go and around noon, but nothing like uh, at night. You know, put it on one airplane, it doesn't come in commission, you have to take it off and put it on another one. It's pretty frustrating. They get it done somehow. I don't know how, but they do. They, we have a, a remarkable uh, uh, delivery rate here. I can't remember the last time I got a maintenance, non-delivery. We always get an airplane. They do a real bang-up job. Tomorrow's target is the Yen Ben Railroad. It's the largest railroad in all of North Vietnam. Its function is to control all the traffic coming in from the North East Railroad and the North West Railroad into Hanoi. It then controls all traffic going south. It's located five nautical miles north of Hanoi. Its defenses include a heavy concentration of AAA 
and there are 26 known SAM sites in the area. Roscoe is brought here by a pilot from Kadena, who is temporarily assigned to the wing. When the pilot was shot down up north, Roscoe sort of became everybody's dog. The only dog allowed on base. Now Roscoe's a free agent and goes everywhere. Sort of a, a tramp with a big heart. But lots of guys, for instance, don't feel right unless he's sitting there in a commander's chair during the mission briefing. They say if he sleeps, it's going to be an easy mission. If his ears perk up, watch out. We hear an awful lot about surface-to-air missiles. They're called SAMs or referred to as SA-2s. This is a picture of an SA-2 site situated in the immediate Hanoi area. A close-up of this particular target would look something like this. Very clearly, you can observe the presence of SA-2 missiles. And in this area, we find the radar van which controls the firing of the missiles and also tracks the aircraft along with providing guidance to the SA-2 missile. Our pilots are constantly faced in flying into North Vietnam with missile firings along with extremely heavy anti-aircraft. I kind of call it the dry throat mission myself. Usually I come outbound from the target and I'm just kind of sucking that water bottle dry, dry throat. <laughs> it's about as, as scary a mission as I've ever been on. Uh, I think it tries you to just about the maximum on uh, the missions. If you can get between uh, a ridge between you and that radar site, they can't guide a missile at you. It's just when you get down in the delta in the flatlands, that 30 mile ring around uh, the city of Hanoi is, is a bear. Because it's flat, you have no protection, and uh, I don't know how true it is, but they say it's the most heavily defended place in the uh, history of aerial warfare. I've been there and I believe it. The winds there from the surface to 5,000 feet along the coast are going to run about 25 knots out of the northeast. Did have an aircraft report right over the mountain area say this morning, just about at Magia Pass at 5,000 feet, he had a wind of 030 at 40 knots. Everybody wear your flak belt today, guys. Well, that wards it off. Everybody wear your flak magnets. How come no matter how much in a rush, I'm always the last guy? You don't want to go. I need to go. It shows up kind of reluctant. There ain't no way. There ain't no way. You got those flags you're going to tie between the wings? Or one on each side? Yes, sir. I always have to quit washing in the morning. Now, first of all, we have in our vest is the radio, which is the most important item we have. Our second item, I would say, is the flares. The third is your weapon. They have their compass and the mirror for signaling and find direction. The most important one upon bailout is the beeper. I hear yours, too. Yeah. Who did that? How many bombs we got? Oh, yeah. We must have 24 or 30 bombs, haven't we? Belongs to this one. One four eight. That's fine. One four eight. There you go, man. Don't kick my first out. Okay, I won't kick your first. Hey, hey. hey we're going way up. Way up north.
is a sound that some hits may well be true. As we climb and head for the valley, keeping close on the trail of the blue. Over flying high to the valley, on the way to the job to be done. Flying high down. One thing that happens to the tanker that uh, everybody remembers most, that's where the adrenaline starts to pump. The airplane's working all right. You got to the tanker, and uh, it accepted the gas. That means you're going. That's, that's your last chance. After everybody gets full, you extend. You head up to your drop-off point.
No way. He's a slack knife on that. Mr. Magoo. There are three of them. They're shooting at us, too. All right. Sound? Oh, there's another one out of the way. Got another one, that's it. Yes, indeed. 51. 51 now. Kind of look at that. We've uh, been very successful here in taking uh, pilots from SAC, ADC, uh, Training Command, and as long as they go through one of the tactical schools, and uh, one of the 105 schools in TAC Air Command, back in the States and receive uh, roughly 70 hours in the 105, they do a good job here. So we do have a few youngsters right out of the training school, but most of uh, our pilots have been in the Air Force 10 to 12 years or longer. And in fact, we have some grandfathers here that are uh, fighting this war. My best day uh, was uh, the 5th of July when uh, I attacked and destroyed uh, four SAM sites in one 25-minute mission. And this came about because uh, in uh, escorting the strike flights, Two SAM sites came up on our way in. We had to uh, attack these boys to turn them off the air to get into the target area. While in the target area, another SAM site came up threatening to strike force. And of course, we attacked and got him. And then on the way back out, another SAM site came up to block our exit out of the target area, which was about 15 or 20 miles north of Hanoi. And uh, we only had one pot of rockets and. Uh, 20 millimeter cannon ammunition remaining, but he fired two SAMs at us and we managed to acquire him visually and put the rockets on him and machine gun him out of commission. This was the best day I've had and I don't care to go through another one of those. <laughs> A little too much for an old man. So if I could, if I can swing a deal to get down south with uh working 100s or F5s or A1s or, geez, I don't care, as long as it's uh, close air support. If I can swing that, I'm going to just try to go or maybe back to the States TDY to upgrade and down there. If not, I'll stick around and fly an O1 or an A1. I'd check you out right up north, you know. you ever have thoughts uh, that you might not make down here? Oh, no. Yeah, but... Uh, uh I've been drawing pay for 16 years. Uh, this is my job. <laughs> well, honest to God, you know, you get up in the 90s and you got 10 to go and you say, well, I'm going home pretty soon, so I've got to tell these guys something. So you go out and lay in bed at night and you think of things to tell them. And it runs uh, <laughs> 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 What do you think about it? <laughs> 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 well, I know, wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm going to tell you guys something right now. This is my speech, and I don't need any help. Uh, incidentally, I have a three-hour speech prepared. Forget it. <laughs> Something I'm damn proud to have, besides working with all you guys and with your names here, I don't really need this picture frame with it. <laughs> but, uh... Oh, I remember you. Because those are the guys you remember, the guys you fought with. in the story of fighter-bomber pilots at Karat Air Base, Thailand. For the flyer, living the hell over Hanoi, facing up to the odds, there is the simple yet poignant phrase, there ain't no way, there ain't no way, there ain't no way. But there comes the day for most, when the job is done. I won't even say to the rest of the guys, no, there's no way. There, there is a way. Major D has schedule on there. Boy, there is a way. There is a way. What I did to come smile this morning is. Be down there. Side after briefing, and to 
together.